Number of interstitial atoms in a solid approximate analysis. Consider a monatomic crystalline solid consisting of capital N atoms and maintained at an absolute temperature T. The atoms are ordinarily located at the normal lattice position indicated by the black circles. Normal is the black circle. Okay. An atom may however also be located at one of the interstitial positions indicated by the white dots in this figure. Interstitial positions they are indicated by white dots. If an atom is in such an interstitial position its energy is larger by an amount epsilon than when it is in a normal uh, position. So uh, the energy of the interstitial is uh, greater than energy of the normal position by an amount epsilon. So this has an energy E normal. When the absolute temperature is very low, uh, all atoms will therefore be in normal positions because that's the lowest energy configuration. When the absolute temperature T is appreciable, however, this is no longer the case. Suppose that there are capital N atoms uh, which can be located in capital N possible normal and interstitial positions. The question of interest is then the following. At any absolute temperature T, what is the mean number of atoms located in interstitial positions? An approximate way of solving the problem is the following. Focus attention on an individual atom and consider that it can be in either one of only two particular positions, one normal and the other interstitial. This system can then be in only two possible configurations, call them A and B, A atom in normal position, B atom in interstitial position. Okay, so A is the normal position B is in interstitial position what is the ratio of the probabilities PB and PA of encountering these two configurations so that's part A of the problem now uh, if I call the energies of these two states when the, uh, the atom is in a normal position and when the atom is in an interstitial position, as we have seen that the normal position, which is A, has the lower energy, let's call it EA. The interstitial position has the higher energy EB, which is EA plus epsilon. So, uh, there is only one configuration uh, in which we have uh, the atom in the normal an individual atom is in a normal position and is in an interstitial position so the probability of having the atom in the interstitial position is a constant c times e to the minus beta ea plus epsilon because it's maintained at an absolute temperature T, the canonical distribution applies, probability of the atom being in, uh, in the normal position is constant C, E to the minus beta EA. So if I take the ratio of these two, then I will obtain uh, the constant C will cancel. Uh, I will obtain E to the minus beta EA plus epsilon minus EA so the answer will be probability of interstitial divided by probability of normal position is E to the minus beta epsilon where beta is 1 over Boltzmann constant times temperature
So let's move on to part B. This is for an individual atom. Focusing attention now on the whole solid, suppose that there are n bar atoms in interstitial positions, then there must also be n bar atoms absent from normal positions. Since any one of the n bar empty normal positions can be combined with any one of the n bar occupied interstitial positions, a B configuration can arise in any one of n bar square possible ways. According to this argument, the probability of encountering a single atom in the solid in a B configuration should be simply proportional to n bar squared if the empty and normal occupied interstitial positions are assumed to be distributed at random. Thus, PB is proportional to n bar squared. Show by a similar argument that PA is n minus n bar is proportional to n minus n bar squared. <clears throat> now, if I have an empty position, empty normal position, and a filled uh, interstitial position, there is only one uh, configuration. Now, if I have two empty positions and two possible uh, field positions this can be combined with this one so you have one empty and one field so the atom uh, basically was displaced from the empty position now it's in the field position it can be combined with this one so the atom was displaced but now it's in the second position uh, then i have this one so the maybe it was uh, in the other position initially which was emptied now it's in the first interstitial position and then i have uh, this one where i have the second uh, <clears throat> empty position is combined with the second interstitial position. So this gives me two to square, two to two, two, two or two squared configurations for two, for two normal and two empty uh, positions. And similarly, if I have one, two, three empty positions, three interstitial positions filled. I can do the same exercise. This can be combined with this one, this one, and this one. Gives me three possibilities. This can be combined with this one, this one, this one. Gives me three possibilities. This can be combined with this one, this one, and this one. Gives me three possibilities. So at the end, I obtain nine possibilities, which is three square configurations. Okay, so I can see that if I have uh, n bar atoms in interstitial positions, there are n bar empty positions. And these atoms may have come from, if for each atom they may have come from any one of the n bar empty positions previously. So uh, there are n bar square configurations. So I find that the probability of having these n bar atoms uh, at these interstitials must be proportional to n bar square that is the number of configurations or number of accessible states uh, it's proportional because it's divided by a uh, total number of accessible states remember so 
uh, we have the probability proportional to m bar squared. Now, uh, we have for the uh, probability of the atom being in the normal position, now I have n bar atoms uh, being in the uh, interstitial uh, positions. So then I have a capital N, total number of atoms, minus n bar atoms in normal positions. And there are corresponding n minus n bar empty interstitial positions. So with the same argument, uh, so the same argument applies. I can combine n minus n bar normal positions with n minus n bar empty interstitial positions. Uh, the total number of configurations will be capital N minus N bar squared. So if you look at the probability of having N bar atoms in interstitial positions divided by the probability of having N minus N bar atoms in normal positions, this is N bar squared divided by capital N minus N bar squared as suggested in the problem statement. Now, uh, combining the results of parts A and B, assuming the usual situation where N bar is uh, much less than capital N, show that the ratio is given by this expression. Uh, now, in part C, Uh, the probability of having n bar atoms in position B and probability of having n minus n bar uh, atoms in the normal positions, since this is equal to n bar squared divided by n minus n bar squared, this ratio, and we, in part A we have shown that due to the energy difference, uh, the, pr uh, the probability ratio is e to the minus beta epsilon, uh, the probability of occupancy. So we find that n bar over capital N minus n bar is e to the minus beta epsilon over 2. But since n is much greater than n bar, n minus capital N minus n bar is approximately capital N, so therefore we can say that the ratio n bar divided by capital N is approximately e to the minus beta epsilon over 2. Okay, so we have, as you can see in this figure, uh, two types of positions for atoms. They can be in normal positions or they can be in interstitial positions, which is uh, approximately uh, midway between normal positions. And at a zero temperature, uh, all atoms will be occupying normal positions because that's the lower energy state. At a finite temperature, there will be atoms occupying interstitial positions. Uh, for example, which atom is occupying an interstitial position here? This one is occupying an interstitial. This one is occupying an interstitial. Uh, so uh, we can see that there will be a distribution. So we're trying to calculate the mean number of atoms occupying interstitial uh, positions. First of all, since there is an energy difference epsilon between the A, where the atom is occupying a normal position, and B, interstitial position, the ratio of the probabilities due to the canonical distribution is e to minus beta epsilon. So probability of occupancy of an interstitial 
position divided by probability of occupancy of a normal position is e to the minus beta epsilon beta is 1 over kt now if we have n bar atoms occupying normal positions n bar atoms uh, i mean n bar atoms occupying interstitial positions n bar atoms giving us empty positions empty normal positions there are as you can see here for two uh, empty positions and two filled interstitial positions two to two configurations so similarly for n bar atoms we have n bar square configurations then we have capital n minus n bar atoms in normal positions and capital n minus n bar empty interstitial positions so the same argument applies the total number of configurations for this will be capital N minus N bar square. Therefore, the ratio of the probabilities PB over PA will be N bar square divided by capital N minus N bar squared because the probability is proportional to number of accessible states, remember, omega. So uh, we have the equal a priori probabilities uh, postulate so since the ratio of occupancy is m bar square over n minus m bar square which is e to the minus beta epsilon with the uh, simplification that capital n is much greater than m bar we can neglect n minus n bar n, the m bar term and make it capital n n bar over capital n is e to the minus beta epsilon over 2